Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you happen to be. Welcome <coughs> to the Street Photography Magazine first ever live town hall. And this time, our topic is street photography during the pandemic. So I'm your host, Bob Patterson. I'm the publisher of Street Photography Magazine. And just want to thank you for being with us. Um, I knew this was going to be a hot topic because, hey, it affects everybody on the planet, right? But I was surprised at the turnout. We got a huge response. And because of that, uh, we're also streaming on our Facebook page. And that's the Street Photography Magazine Facebook page, not our Facebook group, if you want to go over there to watch it or come back and watch it later. Now, before we begin, I also want to thank all of our subscribers for their generous support. Uh, you know, we really can't exist without you. We don't sell advertising. We don't sell our subscriber list or our mailing list or anything like that. And we don't bombard you with junk emails trying to sell stuff. I mean, our mission is to be, um, is to be a platform to introduce, introduce the world to some great street photographers and of all flavors and also be a platform for street photographers to share their work so everybody can know more about them. I'm going to ask you to support us by becoming a subscriber. That's right. This is a commercial. We never do commercials. But I ask, ask you to become a subscriber to help support us. And uh, it's only $4.99 a month. And you can get an annual price right through the website, not through the apps. Um, so if you want to subscribe, just go to streetphotographymagazine.com slash subscribe. And... Um, Okay, so we're going to get into it. I want to introduce everybody before we get started. And the first person I want to introduce is Ashley Hunsberger. Ashley Hi. is our editor. She, uh, oh, Ashley's a lot of things. She's, uh, she's a writer. Uh, she's an excellent writer. She's becoming a photographer. She's also fluent in Spanish. She's fluent in several sign languages, so you can speak to us with sign, right, too. I'm going to embarrass you, by the way. Yeah, oh, it's happening. You. <laughs> but, uh, and you hear her on our interviews all the time with those insightful and thought-provoking questions. So she's a super valuable member of the community. So say hi, Ashley. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you. Glad to be here today with everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Ashley's going to be keeping an eye on the questions. So when we need questions for the group, she's going to have them. So be nice when you ask your questions in the chat. And we've got a number to start with already. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to do that. And uh, so we're going to go in alpha alphabetical order. And so our, our, where we go? Okay, there's Valerie. I just start oh. from the bottom of the alphabet. I started from the bottom of <laughs> with a J. Oh, okay. I yeah, it's from the top. Hello. Oh, the first name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go with, yeah, so this is Valerie Jardin. She is a, I guess we could just say she's probably one of the most prolific trainers in the street photography field. She's a former commercial photographer. And several years ago, she basically went into the street photography business and she trains people in workshops all around the world, uh, particularly in her home country of France, which she certainly adds a lot extra to because she's so familiar with it and the culture. And um, I've met many people who have been through her workshops and some, including one person who's on here today, says they changed her life. So. I know. Thank yeah. you. But I saw that. I heard that. That was quite flattering. That's right. You did. I told you that she said it. Yeah. Like I said, nothing like having happy customers. Many people have been back with her many times. So welcome. Thank you. And I'm currently in Minneapolis. You're in Minneapolis. How are things? Well, we won't go uh, into it, but well, 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 we we can because actually I was just at. Uh, I was just at the epicenter this morning. I was actually um, doing uh, some street photography at the George Floyd Memorial. So I'll be happy to discuss uh, the experience of going, being back on the street, actually, during such uh, uh, an event. Yeah, we actually had a few questions um, 
about that. So I'm sure we're going to touch on them while we're, while we're together today. Okay, our next person is, uh, let's see, i got a finder. There's so many people on there. Look at that. There she is, Lauren Wells. Hello. Hello, how you doing? Okay, Lauren Wells from New York City. She's a, a former attorney. She's now a full-time photographer. She does commercial work, lots of really cool documentary stuff. Uh, she teaches and um, in a lot of different ways. Does workshops as well. Uh, just had a workshop affected by the pandemic, seems like everybody else. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, your your audio is a little soft. Uh, do you want me to get headphones? Mm, might want to give them a try. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll introduce you to our our last panelist. Whoops. Hang on. I'm going to turn off her video. You know, bear with me. This is the first time I've done a a big event with uh, with Zoom, so. This is an experiment. I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous about this, so but we'll we'll make it work. Anyway, Jens Krauer. Jens is uh he's from Zurich, Switzerland. He is uh, he's a Fuji X photographer, uh, just like Valerie is, by the way. And uh, and as a matter of fact, this whole thing was Jens idea. So he suggested it when we did an interview a few weeks ago and uh, we managed to put it together. So uh but he's um He's a former corporate executive. He's, uh, he's a prolific street photographer. He also does commercial photography and video work to pay the bills so he can uh, fund his habit of street photography and documentary photography. And he's, you know, no fault of his. He, he's, uh, he's wearing a New York Yankees cap, but maybe we can do something like <laughs> about that. I, I have to send him an Indians cap. So welcome. See, Lauren, so Lauren supports it. Uh, thank you very much, Bob. I'm glad <laughs> to be here, and I'm glad we could uh, make this happen after uh, talking the last time and being amongst uh, some amazing people. I'm happy to see everybody. Yep, I'm happy you're here, and I, I'm really glad you came up with this concept. So um, we'll be glad to see. Glad we'll glad, be glad to make it work today. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of amazing photographers who are on the call. I see their names popping up, a lot of people from our community. So thanks for being here. And let's see, let me turn this off. I have this uh, set up to uh, for um, speaker highlights. Whoever's talking is going to um, take the center stage. So we want to start off with, with a question that uh, to get the ball rolling. And let's just go in alphabetical order again. So, Valerie, you, you can take it first, and then you guys just run with it from there. Um, this pandemic issue, as I said, affects everybody in the entire planet, and in particular, photographers, and even more so photographers who teach other people for a living. You know, we've, we've had to stay at home and social distance. And so I wanted to start out by asking you, how has the pandemic and the social distancing and the stay-at-home orders affected your personal photography and then your business in general? So, Valerie, why don't you start off? Wow. Uh, well, it kind of turned my world completely upside down, uh, my, whether it's the, the hobby part of the photography and the business part since I've been grounded since mid-March. Fortunately, I finished uh, this, the early season on a really high note. I was teaching in, um, in, in Portugal, in Lisbon, and it was an amazing week. And as soon as the workshop ended, that's when you know, um, lockdown started. And so from there, it just went really, really fast. But the week that we were in Lisbon, the first week of March was just heavenly. It was so amazing. Little did we know <laughs> that we were going to be grounded for several months after that. Uh, so yes, it's affected uh, everything. Uh, but you know what, uh, I made the best of it. So workshops have been postponed for most of them actually postponed a full year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I had um, I, I was I had a European workshops pretty much every month. Uh, I was going back in April again in May, and then uh, uh, London in August. So everything is postponed 
uh, about a year and uh, I started teaching online right away. I came back mid-March. It was one of the last flights back into the country um, going through the shoulder to shoulder CDC experience. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I started uh, online classes within a few days. So I was teaching twice a week, then now it's every other week because I was also writing a book. So since then I finished that book for a publisher. I wrote another ebook and I'm working on, a, on another one. So that will be books, I don't know, 11, 12. And so you just shift gear, you adapt. Um, I miss, I miss the traveling. I can't wait to go uh, to get on a plane. Uh, honestly, um, I can't wait to to photograph uh, photograph life again. And just as I think, I thought that things were starting to slowly get back to normal. At least here, you know, restaurants actually just reopened this week, so cafes are open. It's summer, you know, we're by the lake. Um, then we had this uh, traumatic event in Minneapolis. So um, it was a bit of a, I mean, it's still a shock, but um, I actually did not want to photograph protests. It's just not the type of photography that I do. It's not what I was, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to tell a different story. And so I waited for things to calm down a little bit. And I actually went to, um, to the to, uh, 38th and Chicago Avenue in Minneapolis this morning and just started looking at pictures, but it's, it was all about capturing love and hope. And that's the, the beauty of, of life. And that's really what I focus my photography on, my storytelling on, and that's what I wanted to, to, to see and feel. And I, and I did this morning. So it was my first street photography since mid-March. Um, but in the meantime, I've had a puppy, so I've been following my puppy around, and it's very similar to street photography. Uh, Their decisive moment sure is uh, is real with, with with the dog. So uh, kept me on my toes and got my camera working while I was on lockdown. Did you get another Jack Russell? Uh, it's a mix, yeah, a terror <laughs> mix. <laughs> and by the way, panelists, you have any questions for each other? You know. Go, go for it. Nobody. Okay. That's, um, so tell us about these uh, online classes. How have you been doing them? Are they, are you doing them well? Well, I've been, I was already set up uh, for that through a, a webinar um, setup called Webinar Jam, which mm. I, I do for my podcast too. And so that was pretty set up. So it was just, you know, getting the classes together and, and setting them up so that that was actually pretty quick um and i still do them but they're just not ever twice a week anymore they're every, every other week and i'm doing online critiques and such but um yeah it's, it's just it's not as fun but it was a way to have a little bit of normal too you know you'd see those names that you it was a lot of my i mean the over a thousand students now over the years that i've taught on the streets on, of the world so to see those names pop up it was we felt like we were we would spend a moment together and it was a little bit of normal in this um, such abnormal circumstances. So uh, the classes were, were good, but, um, and I kept the podcast going and yeah, it's, uh, it, but the photography, no matter what, um, is going to become, it's going to be a different for a, a long time. I'm sure Laura and Jens um, are anxious to, get back or already probably are already back. Um, but uh, I'm curious to see how, how the streets of Zurich and the streets of New York uh, have been in Good. recent weeks. Good point. Yeah, Lauren, same question for you. Well, I echo a lot of what Valerie said. Um, my business was seemingly turned upside down as was my street photography. Um, of course, nobody is, uh, all my events were canceled, all my corporate headshots and everything were canceled. But I did manage to have um, some private clients online through Zoom. And I also teach uh, a high school program through uh, a nonprofit organization called NYC SALT. 
everybody remember that name, please. They're, it's a fantastic organization here in New York City, and they're having an amazing print sale um, with, I think it's 250 different photographers. Uh, so you can donate. Anyway, you can check them out at nycsalt.org. Sorry for the plug, but I That's adore fine. them. Um, <laughs> so I've been teaching, uh, I was in a physical high school, and then that got transferred to Zoom. So I'm with them once a week and they've been doing their final projects. Uh, and the irony is I, I need to inspire them to come up with, to photograph when I've been having trouble. Um, and then on the, the street photography and wow, I mean, it was uprooted besides the, the quarantine. I mean, I've, I've ventured outside. I've, had a few jobs that I had to go outside, take the subway. And whenever I'm out, I have my camera. But I'll be honest, um, what I was seeing did not resonate with me. And I felt I had nothing to contribute to. I had nothing to say um, that would be any different than what was being said. And I liken it to, uh, I, do people understand or can people relate when you go to another city or another country to photograph and it's different and you're, you got to get a feel for it. And that new city or country came to me. <laughs> I mean, New York, it's different as I'm sure wherever the listeners are, everything has changed uh, in their own environment. And I, I went outside, for example, um, when the weather started getting nice in April, there were, um, there were people out everywhere in the parks and, but most people were wearing masks. And I realized how much I need that intimacy when I'm shooting, even though the people aren't necessarily seeing that I'm taking their photograph. And I tried shooting and I just, it just hasn't, I haven't found that, that connection yet. Um, and that's okay. I mean, that's part of it. Everything's changing. We got to figure it out. It's a new landscape. And um, then we've got now these protests and a lot of, a lot of other drama going on to say, um, and I haven't, um, I haven't found that either. Um, but I will start venturing out. I bring my camera wherever I go. And I think that is uh, important to just, you don't need to shoot. If you're out and about, you can just be looking around. And even if you're in your home, there's a gestation period, you know, creativity is not linear. So um, allow it to kind of, you know, you gotta, um, what do they say? The land that lays fallow is the most fertile afterwards. So but that's land. <laughs> hmm? I'm kidding. I didn't hear you. I said, but that's land. <laughs> yeah, well, you get my metaphor. That's a good one. That's a good one. No, but you're right. I mean, I hear a lot of people are in a funk, including myself. And I'd read something not long ago. I'm saying, that's okay. Just, you can't help it. Go with it. Just watch TV and eat Cheetos. You know. yeah. No, I mean, I've had, unfortunately, everyone, unfortunately, people claim, oh, they've got nothing to do. Some people claim they're bored. I have had so much work to do and not all paying work, but I felt like I just, I haven't had that much time to just chill out. And I, I wish I did, um, but everyone's got their complaints. Yeah, that's right. That should be the worst of it. So, Jens. Yes, sir. A question for you. What's going on over there? Well, a, a whole lot and nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's a bit the general problem. I mean, I had a great time uh, uh, last. I mean, first of all, getting into street and documentary photography is not a very, uh, I mean, you're not getting rich uh, in, in any short time with that kind of work. So either you have a passion for it or not. And last year was great. I spent... Uh, Three and a half months in New York, went to, uh, to Miami in December, came back, was, by the way, Valerie in, uh, in uh, Lisbon at the same time you were, I didn't know, You're came kidding. back. <laughs> well, I'm not, I was working for, um, I'm doing video work for, for different clients, so I was there. And uh, as soon as I came back, when well, everything changed, um, I, a lot of things you guys said resonate with me. 
And I think uh, something Lauren said resonates with me particularly. I think if you're a creative, you'll find your way out of this and you'll find new fields to, to venture in or you adapt what you have been doing and do it in a different way. But it's, I think that's a little bit our challenge. It wasn't an easy business in the first place um, to get into. And I thought about photographing uh, um, Corona or COVID-19 here in Switzerland. And I just think if I catch something going by, I of course always have my camera, I, I'll take it. But I didn't feel like I have to take a hundred pictures of people with masks or two people separated at a bus station. And this is going to get very repetitive. So as a lot of times, I think out of all the street photography done, we'll have a group of 30 to 40 pictures which have been snapped by accident or by walking by, which will then at the end speak for what's happening now. But going out and photographing people with masks is, is, is not my thing. Plus, I think there's situations where you have specialists, uh, people who are commissioned to go into ERs and to go into places to make the real important pictures at this moment. And as street photographers, that's not us. So we're, we're, I'm getting through this. I'm talking to people, finding new fields to work in. And yeah, we'll see where we all end up. But uh, the passion is here and uh, we'll go on. So what, what recommendations do you have for regular everyday street photographers to get the juices flowing? I think just the same as usual is always bring your camera and keep your eyes open. Now, we already used to having downtimes. So if for two or three weeks nothing good happens, you're already used to that. Then you just, you know, head down, go straight ahead. Bob, I see there are a few questions already coming in. Oh, there's tons. Yeah. Ashley, what, um, have you been able to combine things? What, what, what are some of the, the main topics? Um, yeah, so just so I can get these questions right, it sounds like all three of you have at some point ventured out during this pandemic, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so one question we have is with the pandemic still going on, do you all think that Zoom lenses are going to take over prime lenses on the street? Absolutely not. Uh, well, at least for me, I can speak for myself. I'm not a, a long lens shooter. I need the intimacy. I need the, the quick, I, I need to be close. I don't see that. I mean, six feet is enough, <laughs> um, but I don't need to be 50 feet away. It's just, it's, I don't think, that will change much. Same here. I'm 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 at 23 millimeter and I'm staying at 23 millimeter. And I was shooting with that this morning in, you know, at uh, in the epicenter of uh, this um, this um, movement uh, in Minneapolis. And yes, they were not. The, no one could keep six feet uh, between each other. It's impossible. Um, but you know what? You do your best. You wear masks. I didn't even think I could, um, you know, I, I, I've had an ongoing um, stories of hands, photographing hands. And, uh, and you know what? You use your live view. You reach, you, you know, you, you can get uh, quite, quite a bit closer with just your hands, uh, your arms, and uh, just don't bring your camera, camera to your eye. Use live view and use your screen, and you can actually get quite close to people uh, by not being physically close with your face, but use your arms and uh, arms re arm length. You can, uh, you can get those, those closer shots, uh, but I'm definitely not changing uh, focal length. And there are many other ways to shoot street photography. You don't have to be in people's face either. I usually am not. Uh, this morning I kind of had to because there was no other option. We were really close together. But um, uh, I mean, I've written books about that. You know, how to shoot street photography that is, you know, if you're afraid of getting close to people, uh, then then you you do silhouettes. You photograph light and shadows. You uh, there are so many ways to shoot this without being close to people or seeing masks for that matter. Because I refuse to to photograph people with masks. It's been done. Uh, now we move on. I can't wait. I can't wait till the streets of Paris are back to the where they were, and they will be. I'm I'm not worried about that. Um, we're not going to be wearing masks for months to come. 
I, I, I didn't change. I didn't change my method. And maybe Valerie, it's a good time to give the fifty-six one point to a spin. It's the the perfect distance <laughs> for that kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> Which is anyway my favorite. I'll lens, look but for no, it in the mail. Yes, thank you. Do that, <laughs> and um, I would never change my my shooting approach. To I mean, there's situations where you do adapt it, but now in general, just going out, I don't think I would change anything about what you've been doing up to now. I guess that was an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a second one here that might be a little more challenging. Um, we have someone in the chat asking, "Why is street photography different during these times?" Why is it different from any other time? Aren't we always trying to catch the decisive moment and isn't that still there? Absolutely, yeah. It, whatever that decisive moment is, may not be as romantic as it was six months ago, <laughs> but uh, it's there. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, for me personally, as I mentioned earlier, I haven't found the rhythm or the lyricism, let's say, of the new landscape that, so that's gonna take a while for me to connect to that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not as inspired right now, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I think the question you can ask yourself, I always do when I go take pictures is why? And if you don't have a reason to go out or you don't have a reason to shoot something, don't do it. I mean, what I would, I love everybody who's excited about shooting, but I would strongly not recommend to go out and put yourself in harm's way right now to do pictures that have been done or that will not stand exactly. out. And I think one thing that differentiates maybe street photography from other things is, as I said before, I think we all as a collective will produce a certain body of work about this, but we're not commissioned to go chase COVID-19 pictures. But we will find signs and they will speak as a whole of the work, I believe. And my goal, just even with the, the protest and same with the pandemic, my goal is to photograph the, for the pandemic is the return to normal, um, not the pandemic experience. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to remember that, honestly. I hope in 10 years we can say, oh yeah, remember 2020? I hope, I hope we forget this horrible time. Um, but then same with the, the, the protests. My goal was not to photograph the protests. Um, my goal is to photograph change and hope. Um, so, you know, uh, through the, the children on the streets and things like that. I just posted my first picture that's been taken, taken other than my dog, uh, since March uh, of actually uh, candid street photography. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a little girl in the, in, who lives in South Minneapolis. And, and to me, it's the, it's, that's the message I want to say. Uh, I mean, plenty of my friends who are right there in Minneapolis every day who shot the protests and 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 risk their safety and and their their health too. And I think those those photographs are so important, so important. I just didn't feel that was that wasn't that wasn't for me. I just want to to tell tell the story from here on. But that's what inspires me more. And, and we have to think of our mental health, too, as street photographers. Um, you know, you have to be ready to photograph crisis. It's going to affect you. And this time is difficult for everyone. I mean, for us, it's not only our personal life, it's our businesses. Everything is, is in, you know, in in a on hold and so it's difficult enough to go through this time it's traumatic and so um you have to to take care of yourself too as a creative Agreed. you can't force yourself to go photograph something that you your heart isn't into that's what i'm trying to say i think i think it's not time for activism it's time for purpose rather mm -hmm. in the photography and um I mean, street photography has always been close to, to documentary and social documentary, but if you go this way, I think you need a purpose, a subject, a place, and all of these things. I mean, randomly going out right now, I am I share that feeling with Lauren a bit. I'm, I'm not feeling super motivated to, to go through the streets and refine the same thing again and again. So, there's dedicated people who do that. Mm -hmm. 
And to continue with that, I've spoken with a bunch of street photographers early on in the quarantine who said, oh my God, what are we going to do? I, I, the, they, they feel they need to get out that creative energy. And um, sometimes we have to confront what is instead of fighting against it, because that's what opens up the path. And um, I don't have answers as to when or how or what, but it's okay not to know. It's okay not to be able to see. It's, it's not the end of the world if, if you're not producing something that, you know, resonates. There's, there's times to just yep. lay yep. back and trust. This isn't at the end of street photography. This is not the end of your creativity. And, and it's a good time, um, I agree with Lauren, and it's a good time too to, to reflect on what you've done. It's a good time to write. Um, I've been posting a photo story every day, except for today because I actually had fresh material, but <laughs> I've, I've been um, trying to educate any way I, I could. So just writing a, a, a photo story every morning and posting a picture on Instagram was kind of a purpose. It was like, yeah, I feel, I feel good I'm doing that. It's a little bit of normal. And it wasn't pictures of the pandemic. I didn't mention that um, so I think there are so many ways you can you you can share and continue to inspire um, but yeah you can't you can't force creativity I don't know about you guys. I, I was in New Zealand when this happened and we barely got home and I thought okay we're gonna be stuck inside I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I want to you know, we're creating course and all this stuff and you know what? I just couldn't get to any of it. I don't know what the secret is to kick yourself in the butt and get to work, but it wasn't working for me. Think of all the energy that we all build up for when we can get back going. I'm, I'm very convinced uh, that, I mean, if you do creative work, you always have down phases. And usually all you do is take a little bit of, of energy to go back up. So we all can kind of collect energy right now to go back out when this is changing or different. I, I don't mean to, to interfere with, uh, with your questions, Bob, but I'm wondering if I may ask a question. Sure. If any of you guys have taken the time to kind of reflect on your own photography and how to go forward during this time. Because I've been going through all my pictures from the last three years. I had a ton of time. I'm just wondering if you had some kind of self-reflection thing going or changes in how you do things based on the time you had to look at your own work. Anything like this happened on your end? Well, for me, I haven't had so much time to look through um, all of my work, but I have had time to reflect. And for me, it's like you said, the why. You know, looking what is meaningful to me. And it's that answer is starting to change. Mm. And I don't know what the answer is, but I can feel it's different. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I, reflection is, this has been a time definitely for reflection. And, and Bob, I mean, based on what uh, Jens was saying about energy, so much of our energy is, whether it's conscious or not, it's kind of been tied up in this survival mode or what's going to happen next. There's a lot of stress mm -hmm. in the air. And, you know, we need energy to do all these projects that are on the list. So I think we also have to have compassion for ourselves. and. Mm -hmm. You make Be nice, a good point, both of you. Yep. Definitely, we have another question um, related to the the pandemic going on now. Has has the sudden enormous shift in the way everything is caused you to see more historical value in the images you took before this began? Oh, you mean when street photography was a thing back in <laughs> was <a> March, <laughs> pre March in, uh, 2020? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Jens. Uh, sorry, guys, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'll know in five years looking back because it depends on what happens after to kind of put these things against each other. So I, I couldn't tell you right now. I no, I'm, I'm, uh, I think things will get back to normal sooner than we expect. Um, people are resilient. Um, and um, and life will be back to the way it was three four months ago, um, next year. 
I think this year is, yeah, kind of wish I could could sleep and then, oh, it's 2021, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting and uh, and it's okay. I mean, Bob, you were saying, you know, sometime you just, you have, you find, oh, I'll have time to do this and do that. But it's it's not true. I had a I had a book deadline for May first, and there all my travel is canceled, and I had to postpone my deadline to May fifteenth when I had all this extra time. But the, there is that funk, and you can't. I was writing, but I wasn't as productive because because there is that fear, and and you 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 have to take the time to feel sorry for yourself, you know, and then you get over that and then you move on. It's like, Hey, I have a roof over my head. You know, I'm safe. My, my family's safe. You know, it's, it's, what am I, what do I have to complain about really? And then, then you shift gear and then you say, I'm going to, I'm going to write. And then, then I, I, so I think it's normal. It's human. Excellent answers, guys. And I, I think that's so true that it just the stress of the situation has affected us all more than we imagined. It, it feels like we should be equally productive because we have extra time and we're at home, but it definitely has an effect on us for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so Valerie, we did have someone ask a question. I'm not sure if um, Lauren or Jens, you have uh, been out during any of these protests that have been going on, but someone was asking, what advice would you give to someone who wants to go out and document an event like this where there is the possibility that it could get violent or there could be riots or things like that? Well, I, I didn't go out during the, during the protests part. I mean, I did participate in some very, very peaceful protests and most of them have been very peaceful. Of course, if you watch the news, you're only going to see the riots. But um, so I did not go to the streets of Minneapolis during that time, but I've, I photographed that in the past and you just have to be on your toes and just really, really watch what's happening. Things can really escalate very quickly. Um, and uh, and protect yourself, especially now. I mean, look at it. We're we are yeah. We're in a pandemic, and and there are thousands of people um, protesting. I mean, it is just it's it's never happened before. And so, I mean, everyone today. I was at uh, at at the George Floyd Memorial, and there were hundreds of other people. Everyone had a mask. Even little kids had masks. So, um, yes, you can't keep the six feet. That's impossible. But people very, are very respectful of each other uh, during that. So, um, you know, and so you just take those precautions. And uh, but yes, it is risky. And and I. I, I I fear, you know, what are, is there going to be a spike in 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 cases in a in a in a week, you know, at, at week mm -hmm. two after this uh, all these, and uh, yeah, it, it is scary, but but this is big, you know, this is a problem that's, uh, you know, the pandemic will come and go, this problem we're dealing with now came a long time ago and will still be going once the pandemic is over. So uh, I, I think those protests were absolutely necessary and uh, and people were willing to take to take the risk. I would add to that. Um, if you're going to go out and photograph a protest, educate yourself. I can post afterwards. I can't find it now. There's so many resources on how to protect yourself and how to be smart. And I would also say, don't try to be a hero. No. I mean, it's just Absolutely. stupid. You're not um, a war photographer, you're a street photographer. <laughs> and um, an amateur. <laughs> and there, there are ways to do it wisely, but just educate yourself before you go. I would absolutely like to underline that. I think, I mean, I think it's important when, when things happen that people are there with cameras to document it. But as I said, bit earlier there's people who know what they're doing in these kind of situations you need to have a because I, I seek these kind of situations out it's not pictures i publish but it's things i'm fascinated by and that i photograph i was 2014 in in hong kong during the umbrella revolution i was in ukraine uh, 2014 because i lived in ukraine my general advice would be don't go and if you go as lauren said educate yourself understand dynamics of groups dynamics of authorities and stuff like that that's not a situation you just walk in and snap some pictures at least that's how i take that kind of stuff 
That's excellent advice from everyone, definitely. So we have another um, question here uh, unrelated to the protests, but um, since we're all kind of on lockdown still it, to some degree or another, how are you sharing your work right now? Um, same thing as I've always done, uh, Instagram. And uh, that's about it, daily posts and, um, and then I podcast, so trying to uh, share inspiration. I haven't shared much. When I do, I share it online somewhere on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I've taken pictures that just I haven't felt that I wanted to share. They weren't my best photos or didn't resonate. So mm -hmm. I didn't post barely anything. I usually don't, but now in this situation, I feel there's more important uh, things to pay attention to. But if I have something good, I'll post it. But I just, it feels like I'm looking for attention in a situation where we need the attention somewhere else. Thank you all so much. I feel like um, you have been so honest and open with us about how everything is going. And I, I feel relieved to hear your very balanced perspectives because uh, some I came in kind of expecting the thing, uh, that you would say, oh, we're still out there, we're, we're still shooting, you just have to, <laughs> where I've been holed up at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for sharing your, your thoughts on everything. <laughs> um, so, we have a few more questions here. Um, we have an, a completely unrelated question, but a good one. Um, Someone wrote, I know some of your panelists have attended, exhibited, and spoken at street photography festivals, but I was wondering how they feel about the importance of festivals for street photography. Um, this person wrote that they hope to start the Dublin Street Photography Festival in the near future, so any tips are welcome. Woohoo, I'll be there. Mancha. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good. Festivals are good. Uh, Jens, I know you have experience with that too. Um, they're, they're, they're a lot of work, but uh, maybe wait till people want to travel again. Uh, but they take at least a year to plan, so. Yes, that's for sure. Jens um, has experience on the planning part too, so. Uh, I, I used to do, a, I'd still do a lot of stuff like this. Currently it's not possible, but I would give that word back to Lauren actually when it comes to festivals. So since Lauren is involved in an amazing festival. Um, yeah, I, I work for the Miami Street Photography Festival behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of work. I think, look, there are so many street photography festivals and photography festivals in general throughout the world. And I think that's great because it just expresses everybody's interest and it, it we have a bigger community. Um, and as long as you're doing it for the right reason, whatever that is, that this is something that you're really passionate about because you need that passion and energy to keep you going <laughs> because it takes, it's, it takes a lot of work. And um, are they, how do I feel about them in terms of their importance? Um, I think they're great. It's a great place to meet people. It's a great place if they have contests for you to, if you enter and you get your work seen, you basically get free publicity um, and, and you know, they do a lot of marketing for you with your photos or your talks. Uh, but it's, it's also for people, I know plenty of people that don't like to um, do any of that and that's fine too. You gotta find your own road, but um, uh, good luck to you. And I've never been to Ireland, so I hope to get an excuse to come. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> <laughs> you never been to Ireland? I have not. No, I was talking to Jens. He lives. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. He's a no, I haven't. Fan. Oh, cool. So we have a. We just had another interesting pandemic question come in um, through the chat, and we've touched on it a bit, but I think it's worth asking. Um, what someone asked, how as photographers can we wait until things go back to normal? Honestly, I've been feeling a little guilty not getting out there and shooting. Do you feel like you're hiding from the pain and ugliness of the pandemic and the protests? I feel like this is life right now. We should find a way to engage in the world as it is. Who wanna go first? 
I'll, Lauren, I'll go just, ahead. whenever I hear the word should, mm. I, my ears perk up. If you're saying I should, but you don't want to, just listen to that and trust yourself. I mean, there's, there's all this guilt. We want to we wanna be productive. We, want, we need affirmations. We all have egos, and I don't say that in a negative way. We all want people to, you know, we want to be proud of work we're creating. And, um, but to feel guilty about, I mean, there's, there's so much stuff of such gravity going on right now. And we just by figuring out how we fit in this new world, we don't have to be screaming at the rooftops um, to participate in this. So if you're feeling guilty, that's wasted energy. And just give yourself a break. Um, if you, if you want to, and you're motivated, go for it. But if you're not, no shoulds, it's like life is too short and maybe this whole pandemic and having to stay inside and everything that's going on. I mean, for me, there was a lot of time of reflection and you know, you're just with you and the voice in your head. I mean, I don't, I live alone and it was just me and my thoughts. And, uh, if you start paying attention to them, at least for me, realize how much you beat yourself up. And it's just, it's a waste of time and energy and it's habitual. So, and I'm speaking for myself, um, but I think we all can relate. And so for me, it was a blessing to have that opportunity to say, oh, enough, enough, stop. You know, life is too precious and let's find a more positive way to think about things. And like Bob said, like, you, you know, he didn't get to his projects and we all understood that. It's like, yeah, it's, we're human beings and we put, uh, a little too much pressure on ourselves absolutely follow your heart and and if you go out there you know try to find your own angle try to find something that's really resonates with you and that will be a good way to 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 start shooting again um, don't try to just you know take random shots just uh, maybe work on a project do a little bit of networking see you know try to make some contact and, and plan a little bit have a, a more of a focus um, because otherwise it's depressing honestly I before before I went out today I actually I I went uh, downtown uh, St. Paul which is a you know not a, the most exciting city uh, but <laughs> normally so now it's like completely dead and it was the most depressing experience. I mean, there, there was just no one on the streets. It was completely deserted on a beautiful uh, day during lunchtime when usually there are food trucks everywhere. It was completely deserted. It was the most depressing experience. And that gets you more in a funk. So um, I thought, no, I need to, I, I want to go back and, and work on a project. But uh, right now, just, uh, just walking the streets just for the, just looking for opportunities pretty depressing so i mean just coming back to your question i don't think i'm hiding for me personally the opposite is the case i mean i'd love to be in new york currently for photography and this is you need to very well explain why this is the case because that means you maybe feel like that that'd be a good purpose for your photography but i don't feel like i'm hiding for something it's just that as lauren said it makes no sense to be active if you don't have that purpose even if i don't repeat myself because there's too much uh, at stake on the other end wherever you are with your camera if you're a street photographer and and you have your camera with you wherever you see something significant or or social injustice or, or racism in the action go and, and photograph it anyway because that might be a, a relevant moment but i mean uh, i love to go to new york for photography reasons right now, because I feel it's a significant time. So it has little to do with hiding. It has a lot to do with, do I belong there and can I get there? And does it make sense for my photography? Excellent answers. And again, very balanced. Thank you for all sharing your thoughts on that. I think everyone's been asking themselves that question. Hmm. So how are we doing on questions? I think no, it's almost in one way or another, up. we huh? have, I think in one way or another, we have been able to answer just about everyone's question. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Well, yeah, why don't we just start wrapping things up? Because I, I promised we'd keep this to an hour. And uh, 
But if, if each of you on the panel can take a minute to tell us where people can find you, what you're doing next. I know we've talked about some of that, but but uh, yeah, where people can find you online, if you do have anything coming up after this thing settles down, if it ever does, um, let us know. So Lauren, why don't you go first? Okay, well, you can reach me at Lauren Wells, that's W-E-L-L-E-S, uh, dot com, or, or Lauren Wells, no space, on Instagram. Uh, what I'm doing next, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, I mean, I have a workshop in Seville, Spain that was, I was supposed to be there right now. And uh, so we've postponed it till next, uh, next May, 2021 with Leica. And uh, I may be doing some other workshops, but again, it's just a wait and see uh, with respect to my own projects. Uh, I, as some of you know, I've been doing a project on stickball for three years and the season has been canceled. Um, but I was in the editing phase anyway um, and trying to get it out to, for people to see and take it somewhere. But then this happened and really uh, stickball is not the most important thing on people's mind and understandably so. So I, it's, it's an exciting time because it's so uncertain and it's also scary as hell. So I have another question for you real see. quick. Why don't you pick up that guitar back there and play us a song? Oh, yeah. I support <laughs> so, that. I have a 30-year love-hate relationship with this thing. <laughs> and I actually, for um, uh, the first time in almost a year, picked it up a few days ago. So <laughs> getting back on the horse there. Hopefully oh, yeah. next time I can play you a song. Okay. Yeah, that'll okay. give you a chance to practice a little bit. All right, Valerie, what's up with you? Uh, well, you? Um, uh, same here, you know, I'd be just back from Paris right now and getting ready to for a new adventure next month. And so everything is postponed, but it's okay. It's going to be so sweet to travel and teach on the streets, wherever it is, once we're done with that, that um, just that makes me really happy and excited. Uh, because uh, as much as I enjoy teaching through books and, and online and everything, there is nothing like the interaction with a small group of, of students um, and the, the camaraderie of a workshop. So I miss that so much already, but it's gonna be better than ever once it starts again and uh, I'm going to be re releasing more uh, more books and uh, yeah I'm going to travel for me to start until um, until workshops can can start again yeah when it's when it's safe and what's your what's your website uh, my website is valeriejardin.com so All it's right. my name that you can probably see there v a l e r i e j a r e i n very good and Jens what about you well, first things first. So if you look for me, you can find me at uh, www.jenskrauer.com. Everything goes from there, my Instagram, whatever. And uh, otherwise, I, I, I share what uh, Lauren and Valerie said. It's, uh, it's scary. It's challenging. I have a few canceled workshops from the beginning of the year, Amsterdam, New York, etc., which we'll try to do again in some way, probably first Europe, then the US, since we don't know when we can travel, but we'll figure out. I uh, I have nothing big to announce. We'll just see how this thing goes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What about you, Ashley? Same as everybody. Just uh, hold up everybody. for now, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens later. <laughs> and where can people find you? Good question. You can find me here with Bob <laughs> on the podcast. I am working on a website. I. Oh. I started that project All during right. this time, but you know how it goes. It's been real slow. <laughs> yeah, well, you can find us at streetphotographymagazine.com. It's a mouthful, and it's easy to mess up when you type it out. But, uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys. Thanks to thank the panel for your inspiration. I, I found it very inspiring um, and comforting myself because like everybody else i've been in a funk as well so it's nice to know misery loves company right <laughs> are you not alone and, and remember not that alone. we're not all alone. in the same boat 
like all the commercials say, we're all in this together. But mm -hmm. uh, and thanks everybody for participating, for asking your great questions, and mm -hmm. we're having such a great turnout. And like I said, we're recording this. Uh, if you missed part of it, you can come back. Uh, we'll be posting it on the website on Friday. So thanks everyone, and um, looks like we're wrapping up just a couple minutes early. So I thought this was a lot of fun. We're going to do it again. Good. On a different subject, though. <laughs> it was great, Bob. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Bob. It's nice and, talking uh, to all of you. Good to see you all. I hope I see you all soon again in health and in good spirit, because we all already met personally, uh, except the Ashley and Bob, which we'll do at some point. But stay safe right. and see For you guys sure. soon. For sure. Here's yeah, to a group everybody. hug everybody. in the future. Likewise. Hey, wear that mask. <laughs> Protect the... It's not a political statement. Wear the damn mask. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.